if you can see it on the mic. It's funny, they had originally cut them the bandanas, they were tiny. I was like, whose face does this fit on a baby? <laughs> so, okay, Melanie, tell me about how these bandanas came to be. Okay, so um, my partner and I, Jesus Barraza, um, were asked by a friend who works at the Spanish Speaking Citizens Foundation. Um, after having taught an alternative spring break on how to make political posters uh, to come in and assist essentially like a community um, day for banner making and um, is geared towards youth and is like really interracial which is interesting too you know cross-racial a lot of black youth and a lot of raza youth um, and so we were thinking about like what can we do in an evening that you know will have a beginning and an end and a product that actually will work toward the May 1st actions. And so um, one of the things that Homies organizing the mission to empower youth that has done in the past um, is make bandanas. And so uh, we thought, you know, that's really popular. It's, um, I see it really as kind of the urban reflection of Zapatismo in terms of this anonymity and so um, we were trying to decide what kind of image to put on the um, bandanas and after having done this alternative spring break um, some of the message that messages that were resonating with the youth and that they were coming up with were you know really about this um, indigeneity and not so much um, kind of this more assimilationist thinking and so when we shared images like Yolanda Lopez's um, just totally appropriate, totally timely and you know she did this so long ago uh, but still resonates with folks um, with the class we saw that you know youth that are like 16, 15 are still resonating with the image and so we decided to do this image we also did one that said um we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. And so there's definitely kind of this analysis that young people have and we wanted to respect kind of their uh, way, world view around being at these marches and like articulating, articulating a particular politic. And so we really felt like Yolanda's image did that and people always get excited when they see it. And so we set up two screens, one with the image that Yolanda did and one with the, the we didn't cross the border, we across this. And this was actually the first screen that we set up. And it was so great because um, we initially thought, you know, we would be printing everything and, you know, the youth would just assist us. And really quickly, that totally changed, the dynamic change. The youth, you know, were like, let me hold it, I can do it. And right away they were totally empowered in the process they figured it out really quick and they were they produced probably close to 100 of these bandanas and so it was really great to see you know what we really think of as the next generation of radical graphic artists um, taking an image that comes from that legacy you know like we wouldn't be here without Yolanda and we wouldn't be able to teach that and so seeing kind of that connection through the generations was very exciting it was exciting to just see people you know the squeegee and a screen when that isn't necessarily a medium that is as popular as it was in the 60s and 70s so you know the youth were really excited and I think this is something that you know when they, they're getting to produce images that are this powerful and that resonate this much with them, the process and the medium becomes something that they become more interested in. So um, because we have a relationship with the center and with the organizers there, we're hoping to continue to do these kind of workshops and build the capacity in the youth to keep doing this and eventually do it on their own without us in the room. So.